Today is the 22nd. Tomorrow is the 23rd. Of the 11th, 2015. And we've got a little bit to look at before we go into the message. Um, we had a testimony come in the mail about some African people. African brethren and came from Nigeria and there's quite a bit to be said about this article I mean to the uh, untrained eye it really just a letter and there's not a lot in there but to those who walk in the spirit there's so much in this one letter even the timing it's about people, this letter we got, who were readers and then become and desired and, and, and want to be doers. There was 220 of these African university students who um, go down to the library, gather together and get on our website, fireandhammer.com and have a read. And I thought it was great and all that but none of them took it to heart but miraculously and mysteriously they'd still go back and read because the Lord knew and knows all things he knew the day would come when there would be a shakedown and it was when their eight friends were cold, uh, killed in cold blood by Sudanese people and uh, they testimony of our website fireandhammer.com goes like this they said that uh, our website and, and the message on our website is powerful undiluted uncommon undeniable unfailing unavoidable message of God well I don't think I could give our message and, and our teaching and theology I don't think I could add to that really I think they've nailed it there and uh, I received this letter out of my mailbox on the 19th of the 11th on the 18th of the 11th we had teaching here at the fellowship and I ministered on my word as Jeremiah said Jeremiah 23 29 the Lord says my word is a fire and a hammer and they've been tasting and reading of the fire and hammer fireandhammer.com and then they realize hey we better start doing something about our position the Lord allowed eight friends to die without Christ that he may save 220 and this 220 said in the letter because of the death of our eight friends 220 of us have now completely surrendered our lives to Christ. We now remember all that we read on fireandhammer.com. See, we don't labour in vain. We, we must be patient. We, we must leave everything in the Lord's hands. The Word of God goes out and never returns void. Never. They said, we are, brother, we have seen our friends die without Christ. 220 of us, we want to make it to heaven. And then they gave a description of the position of these 220. It says that in the letter, it says that, brother, you see 220 of us were one, once either backsliders, churchgoers, drunkards, humanizers, 
idol worshippers, Muslim or members of secret cults. I mean, that's a vast collection, isn't it? But the one and same word ministered to them all. Hey. As they said here in, the, in their letter, we don't want to die like our friends without Christ. We were readers for some time now, but we were only reading. None of us had ever decided to give our lives to Christ. But then something serious happened and the, that was the eight friends who were murdered in cold blood, obviously for no reason at all. The fear of God came and God works in mysterious ways and the Lord knows the heart. I think the most powerful happening with this letter is it was written on the 20th of the 5th 2015 but I received it on the 19th of the 11th 2015 on the 18th of the 11th 2015 I was ministering about the my word the, the word of God as a fire and a hammer And if you go back to that message and listen to what I said, I believe it would just about equal what they said about fireandhammer.com, our website. Powerful, undiluted, uncommon, undeniable, unfailing, unavoidable, true message of God. And the message that I was ministering on Wednesday was actually a message I had written in 2004. So you got quite a few dates here. The actual message, my word, I penned in 2004. They wrote me in a letter on the 20th of the 5th, 2015. I preached the message on my word again on the 18th of the 11th. And then I went to my mailbox and got my mail on the 19th of the 11th. And when I took the mail out of the box, I seen it had the international stamps and everything on it from Nigeria. I opened it. I had a speed read very quick. And I just seen a, a few paragraphs, about 220 of us, decided to give our lives to the Lord because of what's written on your website because the Lord led us there and I gave it to the young lady that was at the mail centre and I said have a read of that I asked this young lady if she knew God and she said yes I said what God are you talking about she said Jesus I said right we got a starting point here you're obviously a believer, but you haven't been a receiver. A bit like the 220 Africans, and it overflowed onto this one girl, this letter. And then I introduced her to the Lord, and she asked the Lord. There was no problem with her when I asked her, do you believe that you're a sinner? She said, yes, I am a sinner. Would you like to be forgiven of all, every single one of your sins, and be cleansed? Yes, I would. And we prayed. And it was that day that the boss wasn't there. So there was no interruption of anyone. It was just one-on-one -on -one and the glory of the Lord fell. Nothing but miraculous. And no sausage sizzle. There was no sausages involved. There, my hand wasn't even in there. It was the Lord's doing. Little in the master's hand is much. Much out of the master's hand is little. But little in the master's hand is much. We never look at things 
by our sight. We look at things by the word. We look at everything through the established canon. And then we'll have strength and faith to move mountains. We'll be able to do the miraculous in his name. But if you look at things with your naked eyes, you're in trouble. You're, gonna, you're not going to go far, I tell you. You're not going to go far. So, the Lord gave me a song about this this morning and I put it together before the meeting here today, a little song about the 220 who were readers and become followers. Hey? From readers to doers. Not just to be a doer, a reader of the word, we must be doers of the word. At least we deceive ourselves. And there's many readers of the word, but doing is another story altogether, isn't it? takes Holy Ghost power. And if you're going to rely on Holy Ghost power to take you through and deliver you and strengthen you and empower you, you're going to have to have faith in the Son of God, Jesus, God Almighty. You need faith. We need faith. We need to utilise the faith and the measure that he gave us. Can someone say amen? amen. And strange enough, during the week, I uh, ministered in, in a couple of different areas, actually. Uh, I, I have been very, very busy with di different issues, but there was a lady waiting for St. Vinnie's, St. Vincent's de Paul to open, and she was standing there, and I was preaching Jesus, Saviour, God, King, and Judge, and Lord, Friend, brother and shepherd and she decided to come down she said I heard what you were saying about Jesus I said do you know Jesus she said well I've been water baptized I said well that's something isn't it I said but would you like me to introduce you to Jesus she said yes I would I said because I know him I said, do you believe you're a sinner? She said, yes. I said, well, we can pray now. We would ask the Lord. And when we started to pray, her, it's like her tongue was tied up in her head. It was the powers of darkness hindering her. She said, I said, what? <laughs> hang on, hang on, hold it. <laughs> ooh, ooh, hold it right there. Now let's just start at the beginning. <laughs> let's make it real simple. Lord Jesus. We just take two words at a time. Lord Jesus. And she said, Lord. I thought, oh boy, this is a long road. You know, I was expecting a legion to come out of her or something, you know. Uh, I took her through the prayer and, um, I mean, God knows what went down and and I know she's needing a complete overhauling, you know, the chassis's rusted and the motor's, well, just about finished. There, there has to be a genuine and bona fide uh, confession. We confess with the mouth and believe in the heart. See? Um, Father raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Ghost. We, we shall be saved. Confess with the mouth uh, unto salvation we confess with the mouth to salvation believe in the heart unto righteousness that father raised Jesus from the dead by Holy Ghost power you, you will be saved and then 
there's being saved and then there's saved to the uttermost but strange how it was unusual this this woman's tongue it just wouldn't couldn't get the words together you know and it wasn't something she was doing it's really strange but praise the lord hey how wonderful is our lord today is our final message on decreasing for the now there might be another series on decrease too who knows but decrease one we're down to the letter e and we've done d c r e a s e we must decrease we've been reading from john chapter 3 relating to john the baptizer who was not a baptist amen but a prophet of Yahweh. And we said, uh, better still, let's read John 3, starting in verse 22, recapping on the whole thing. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he remained with them and baptized. Now John also was baptizing in Anan or near Salem because there was much water there and they came and were baptised and John had not yet been thrown into prison. Then there arose a dispute between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purification and they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, we, he who was with you beyond the Jordan to whom you have testified. Behold, he is baptising and all are coming to him. John 3, 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from above. You yourselves be, you yourselves bear, bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, and the friend of the bridegroom who stands hears him, rejoices greatly <laughs> because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. He must increase, I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard, he, that he testifies and no one receives his testimony. He who has received his testimony has certified that God is true. For he who God has sent speaks the words of God for God does not give the spirit by measure <clears throat> Father loves Jesus and has given all things into his hand he who believes in Jesus <clears throat> has everlasting life and he who does not believe in Jesus shall not see life but the wrath and anger of father abides on him can someone say amen? amen so we must decrease we'll find if we're wise that decreasing and and, and humbling ourselves before god will put many things in our lap and you don't have to strain your brain you don't have to uh, struggle in the flesh to get things we know that the scriptures say seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all other things will be added to you as you need them one and one is two, two and two is four. It'd be added. 
not giving you given to you one lump sum but added to you as you need it Jesus is not in the business of rot rotten food you're stacking up all your food it's just going off just take what you need for the day go buy fresh we buy fresh we don't buy something one week and eat it three weeks later or two weeks later we buy fresh more value right some people buy oh we bought it bulk a week later it's reduced half the price hello hell ho John 3 verse 33 he who has received his testimony has certified that God is true a lot of people say that God is not true Jehovah Witnesses they don't say God is true they don't receive Jesus testimony they don't receive John the Baptist testimony the, most of the Jews don't receive John the Baptist testimony or Jesus testimony they say God is a liar because Jesus' testimony is that he is God manifested in the flesh the Muslims don't receive Yahweh God's testimony they say he's a liar too because they say that Jesus is just a prophet he's only a man he, uh, good teacher even the Asian religions the Baha'i and Boohoo and all them they don't receive Jesus testimony they think he's one of the masters they number him with the masters now he is the master of all ceremonies hallelujah he is the master undisputed champion of the universes plural hey? glory to the Lamb he who has received his testimony you know when someone receives a testimony or whether they just read it you know I've said to people on the street how'd you go with that testimony yeah that was cool I really like that gee that guy yeah I say, how come you're still living the way you are? What do you mean? Well, you didn't receive it. You didn't receive the testimony, friend. Don't you believe in God? Don't do you believe? Are you trying to say God is a liar? No. Hey? What did Isaiah say? The word has gone out, but who has received and who has believed our report? Who? And, and to whom has the arm of the Lord reached? Only those who receive. And, and those who receive Jesus and, and, he, and his testimony, they are given a privilege that no one else on the earth has no one not even church people church ministers don't even have this privilege those who receive every single word of Jesus John the Baptist Paul Peter Matthew Mark Luke and John every single word you can't go just cherry picking He'll give them the opportunity to become sons of the Most High God. Can someone say amen? Those who receive him and receive. And those who receive the Lord Jesus' testimony, ultimately what happens is he becomes their testimony. And that's how they overcome. By the word of their testimony. And if you have a testimony without Jesus as the, the main dish and the hero of the dish, 
If you have a testimony and Jesus is not the theme and the preeminent in it, you, your testimony is not worth a dry biscuit. Your testimony is nothing. And what he has seen and heard, that he testifies and no one receives his testimony. That's another way of saying a remnant per capita, worldwide. He who has received his testimony has certified that Father is true. Listen to this. We're in 34, John 3. For he whom Father has sent speaks the words of Father, for Father does not give the Spirit by measure. They don't speak a bit of the word in Scripture. They, that's all they speak are the oracles of God. Because they've been sent by God. Just like the Muslim, he burned my heart. The Muslim that set me on fire in the street. He burned my heart with his words. Fire and hammer. No other word burns. No other word ever is a hammer. Only the word of God. My Muslim detractor basically was just another one to confirm my calling. So, we have looked at the different letters of the word decrease, the D-E-C-R-E-A-S, last time we looked at the shining, burning and shining lamp, John the Baptist, there's no possible way we can be burning and shining lamps unless we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, unless we decrease. You might be one of them. You might be shining because you put a lot of oil on your face. But you might be uh, burning with anger and jealousy. I don't know. You, you, you might be a lamp that's just about ready to go out, but a burning and shining lamp, only they who are on fire for Jesus. Only those who are willing to humble themselves. You humble yourself and you're willing to decrease and you're willing to allow Jesus to be Lord. That's what uh, increase for Jesus is. He, has, he must be Lord. John the Baptist was saying in John 3, verse 30, he must be Lord and I must be subservient. He must be shepherd, and I must be under shepherd when it comes to a minister. He must be the great prophet that he is, Acts 3.23, and I must be a prophet. There are a lot of religions out there that say oh, we have the end time prophet. You know, our prophet is the end time prophet. That's a high call. That's a big mouthful. I don't claim to be the end time prophet. I claim to be a prophet of the most high, Yahweh. A. Unlike the Mormons and Joseph Smith, Seven Day Adventists and E.G. White, Worldwide Church of God and Armstrong, Herbert Armstrong, JWs and Taz, Mania and Devil, I mean Taz Russell, Taz Charles Russell. They all seem to think that their leader is the end time prophet. Filipino, Iglesias, Necristo, they think that their leader is the end time prophet.
uh, Apollo Quibaloy, Filipino multi-billionaire. They seem to think he's the end time prophet. He's an outright liar and a crook. If you get any spare time, don't waste your prime time, spare. Get on the internet and look up um, Apollo Quibaloy. Q-U-I-B-O-L-O-Y. Apollo Quibaloy. I've never heard anyone tell me so many lies. I mean, and they're just blatant lies that a babe in Christ could see if they weren't under some sort of a demonic spell. Another giveaway for him is they're the only church. No, we at Jesus the Christ Ministries Mission Paradise Now Church, we are not the only church, local church that has the truth. There are others, but they're dotted and they're rare and a remnant. They're uncommon. They're undiluted. They're powerful, undeniable and unfailing and unavoidable. Un uh, 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 of avoidable truth comes out of you. You just can't get around it, over it, or under it. It just shirt fronts you. The true word of God shirt fronts you. There's no excuses or, 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 or apologies. Jesus and his men pulled no punches, doesn't matter who it was, and they were in a good position. Because they weren't relying on the money of people. When you start relying on the money of people, you make yourself a prisoner of the congregation. I don't do that. I've never done that. And I never will do that. <laughs> that is not wise. Because then you become the puppet in the pulpit. And the congregation are moving you the way they want you to be and they're hearing messages they want to hear and you're not to speak against my auntie or my uncle or grandma or grandpa or mummy or daddy or my so precious children. You're not allowed to say anything. Remember, Pastor? Because we're paying the bills. No, you're not. You are not. You might be covering certain expenses of the ministry but you're not paying my bills. As long as we got that clear. If you knew the ministry bill minimum, you would probably go, uh, I'd like people to know that. As I've said for many years, the preacher preaches the gospel, he should make a living. A living. That means everything covered. Is that right? Someone say amen. No, I've never done that. I've never been able to do that. I've made a sandwich, but I've never made a living or a killing. You should be rejoicing about that. Eh? I feel sad for the rest. Because they cornered themselves. Most pastors in the churches of the world today, they've cornered themselves in a corner. And if that congregation turns nasty, they're, they're finished. <laughs> uh, the Lord is good and that's why the disciples of Jesus and the true prophets they didn't make themselves or put themselves in a position where they had to upkeep great financial debt they had what they stood up in they had nothing Glory to the Lamb. So let's go into our last letter in the uh, decrease. In the decrease message. On the decrease. The D was for delighting ourselves in the Lord. That's how you know someone's decreasing. They're delighting themselves in the Lord. They're not struggling and whinging. Oh, oh I've got to pray, have I? Oh, I've got, I've got to give an offering, have I? 
Oh, I've got to go to church, have I? You look, you don't have to do anything. You just reap what you sow. And if you're a slacker, you're just going to reap a slacker's reward. Hello, hell. E, exalted by God. You won't have to even worry yourself. You know, people go to a lot of extent, gathering credentials, gathering qualifications so they can exalt themselves. Be someone. Be accepted by the multitudes. But when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and under his word and you decide, I'm going to decrease, you're going to be Lord from here on in. He'll exalt you miraculously above all. He will exalt you. And you won't be hoodwinked by the daily carry-on of religions and, and, and scaremonger tactics about antichrist and one world governments and this is going to happen and that is going to happen because you don't count your life dear to you anymore. Whether in much or little, you contend. Then we looked at the sea. There was a culling going on in 2.16, uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 11 to 18. All different sorts of happenings there because you decide to humble yourself and walk in the word. All kinds of happenings. And you can't walk with certain people. You just can't do it. Because you're grieving the spirit with him. When you're grieving, you're not growing. You're not growing in the spirit when you're grieving the spirit. Someone say amen. And we moved into the R uh, was for rejoicing in the Lord. And then we looked at Psalm 29, verse 9. Those in the tabernacle of the Lord, those who are right with God, they're forever saying, glory, glory, ah, glory. That's all they ever say. Oh, look what's happened. Someone died. Glory. Oh, look. Ten people have left your fellowship. Glory. Oh, oh what's happened? Look, they've, they've ripped you off. Glory. <laughs> oh, they don't like you anymore. Glory. Oh, look. Look, uh, your husband has left you. Glory. Oh, look, your wife has left you. Glory. Oh, look, your son, children have turned on you. Glory. Oh, look, there's nothing in the offering. Glory. Oh, oh, look, they're all gossiping about you. Glory. 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 Am I, I might make a message today. Glory. Glory. The world's coming to an end. Glory. Oh, the Muslims are going to come and kill you. Glory. Oh, there's going to be a bomb dropped on McDonald's. Glory. Oh, I've got food poisoning again. Glory. Now they said I need three stents. Glory. And I haven't got one. Glory. And then we moved on to... E for enemy. Number one enemy of the devil. Number one enemy of the old man. You become number one enemy of you when you humble yourself. Or the old you. That was in the E. The D-C-R-E. We looked at Zechariah 3, 1 to 5 where the devil came to the right hand of Joshua the high priest he had been uh, playing up and in sin or whatever and he was filthy garments, type of filthy garments. And the Lord said, look, I'm going to forgive you of your sin, put new garments on, new turban, clean you up and I'm going to use you. And uh, everything's going to be sweet. The devil came straight away at, your, at the right hand of Joshua, the high priest, straight away. Opposing. It comes to oppose you. When you make that decision, even those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, even those who desire 
will suffer persecution. That's only a desire. You wail your lock into it. You, if you just desire, I might be here. I'm desiring a nice cup of tea. I'm thinking about it. You know what I mean? Haven't even got the tea yet. I'm only thinking about it. Those who desire to live godly in Christ. You can live ungodly in Christ and end up in hell. Those who desire to live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. And we moved on then to the A. That we're able, capable, as long as we make ourselves available to Christ, the captain. Able to do all things through him. But not if, if we don't make ourselves available, we'll never be capable. Because we're not able to do anything on our own. Without him I can do nothing. Unless it's been given to us from above. We don't have it. It's all coming from above, isn't it? On the decrease, the DCR EAS last week was the shining John 5, 31 burning and shining lamp, trimming the, the wicks, plenty of oil, going on with the Lord, not with an attitude of, oh, the master won't be come for ages, I'll eat, drink and be merry, and, you know. No, no, he can come any time of the day or night, especially now. But even while I'm preaching this message, he could come like that. And today we got the E, D, C, R, E, A, S, E, decrease. E, and we're going to go to the writings of John 9 to get our letter E. And this is our last, this is our last letter in the decrease series. Glory. The decrease is the exalt. To decrease is to be exalted. We humble ourselves on the mighty hand of God we shall be exalted in due season. Above our sin, above the, 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 the wiles of the devil, above our selfishness, above our, our past and our doubt and our fear and, and all our lamentations, he'll exalt us above and we'll get a revelation. I'm seated in heavenly places with him. I see Jesus standing at Father's right hand. So be it. Do what you're going to do to me. Make it quick. Because I'm just about to go and smoke her. Hallelujah! <laughs> Look, he's getting cold. Woo! John 9, she mare. Oh! Oh! Check a random. Oh! Oh! Bougainvillea. Bougainvillea. John. <laughs> Clover! Glory. Glory. John 9, 13. They brought him who formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Now it was a Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes and then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight and he said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I watch and I see. Therefore some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. These Pharisees were seven day Adventists. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such things? And there was a division among them. They said to the blind man again, What do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight 
and they ask him, saying, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? And his parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know, or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age, ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was the Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said he is of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give God the glory. We, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that, I, that though I was blind, now I see. Then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why? Do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciple? Then they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We know that God spoke to Moses, as for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, Why, this is a marvellous thing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he is over my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshipper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, <coughs> it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, You were completely born in sins and are you teaching us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out and when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And I'm going to leave it there. And then he says, Actually, in 37, you have both seen him, and it is he who has, is talking to you. <laughs> uh, amazing what we don't know, isn't it? It's amazing. We just don't know who we're talking to sometimes. We think we do. <laughs> we, we think we do. But we really don't. Because we've lived all our life blind. And then when the Lord opens our eyes, we're only really just starting and we're babes, aren't we? We're babes in Christ. And we don't really see Who's doing what for us? We get all different kinds of interpretations of how things are happening. A bit like our 220 uh, African brothers and sisters in the university recently who were reading the website and fireandhammer.com reading and reading and never doing but then the Lord said I'll give them a bit of a jolt I'll give them I'll just give them a bit of um, a celestial tasering <laughs> eight of our friends have died shock horror and they didn't know Jesus either shock horror I think it's time we sorted things out with Jesus. A real fire and a hammer thing, wouldn't it? Because that's the website they were on. 
and then they decided to speak the truth, <coughs> testify of the message of fire and hammer, which was powerful, undiluted, uncommon, undeniable, unfailing and unavoidable. Unavoidable truth. Can't get around. Hey? And there'll be a lot of things happening over there in uh, Nigeria at the university right now and in those one's lives. And let me want to know, who is this that you claim to follow now? Who, what is this teaching? We have never heard of it before. We, we, we know about Benny Hinn and Joyce Meyer, but who is this Riff Raff from Australia with his fireandhammer.com who doesn't preach tithing and who doesn't preach uh, <coughs> peddling the word and, and doesn't sell his books and literature and CDs and DVDs and, and, and uh, doesn't collect monies to build synagogues and buildings and, 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 and luxury houses. Who is this fellow? I've never heard of him. He must be a sinner. <laughs> hey? Dear, oh dear, oh dear. And here he was, this young man. A bit of, a bit of mud, a bit of clay. John 9, 11. And he answered and said, a man called Jesus. Whew, that's so simple, isn't it? A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go down and have a wash in the pool of Siloam. So I went and washed and I received my sight. And I don't even know who he is. I don't even know this Pastor Paul Sheehan. Those 220 Africans don't even know me. But yet, they heard the word. They heard the message from fireandhammer.com. And they recognized it as being the unavoidable true message of God. <laughs> Uncommon, unlike any other message. Unique, unique. Powerful, undiluted, pulling no punches, hey? And then, <clears throat> we got the, the situation with the family. The parents of the young man. John 9, 20. His parents answered them. Or better still, let's go aiding. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, <clears throat> We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But... By what means he now sees we do not know. Or who opened his eyes we do not know. He is of age, asked him. He would speak for himself. I like that. He would speak for himself. His parents said that these things, his parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that Jesus was the Christ, they would be put out of the synagogue. There goes the benefits. There goes the fringe benefits, sideburn benefits, moustache benefits and the beard benefits. It all goes out the door, doesn't it? Excommunicated. That's the title of our message today. It's communicated. That's the title of our message. 
When we start to decrease, when we start to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and receive the word, excommunication is going to come. You're no longer going to be communicating with certain people and groups. There will be communications of the past, as in X. They will be ex-boyfriends and ex-girlfriends. No longer. Sorry, we can't do this anymore. It's not of the Lord. We just can't do this. And who said so? The Lord said so. He said the sexually immoral will not enter the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter how much money they give to a religious organisation. It doesn't matter uh, how many good deeds they do. If they mow the grass of the pastor's house, it doesn't matter what they do. If they're immoral, they will burn in the fires of hell. They will not enter the kingdom. We can't do this anymore. Openly or secretly. Someone say amen. Excommunication. What a way to finish decrease. E is for excommunication. No longer. <clears throat> when we start to decrease and we start to humble ourselves, we find out that there somehow becomes a communication breakdown. Communication breakdown with people around us who are not decreasing and who are not humbling themselves under the mighty God. We just can't se seem to communicate as we did before because we're on a different level. We're of another spirit. It's so funny how we don't talk anymore. Very, isn't it? If we're going to do the way, as the Lord says it is. But then again, we can just say along as if nothing happened. And even though I follow Jesus, I still like to keep all my old rotten sinful friends beside me just in case this Jesus doesn't cut the, cut the mustard you know what I mean just in case we don't like to lose our fringe benefits sideburn benefits, beard benefits eyebrow eyelash we don't like to lose our mascara benefits Just like the parents of the young man <clears throat> did not want to be excommunicated from that fancy Pharisee building. John 9, <clears throat> 21. But by what means he now sees we do not know parents speaking or who opened his eyes we do not know. He is of age, asked him. He will speak for himself. 22. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For they, the Jews had already agreed that if anyone confessed that Jesus was the Christ, they'd be put out. And aren't we put out? When we confess Jesus as the Christ, as Messiah, the Anointed One. See, even that wording, Jesus the Christ, it just spells and smells excommunication. Hallelujah. I'm loving this. That's just the way it is. Excommunicated. From the world, for starters. From the world.
1 John. Can we go there, please? 1 John. It's so funny how we don't talk anymore. 1 John 4, 4. Go, go, mobile. Geo, geo. Go, go. 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They, they are of the world. 1 John 4, 5. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not want to hear us. And by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. If a person has a spirit of error, they will not listen to you. If a person is led by the spirit of the devil, he's the spirit of error. The Bible calls him the liar. He's a liar from the beginning. Spirit of error. They got it wrong. They can't hack the pace with those who have the spirit of truth. The spirit that's got it right. The spirit that is right. The spirit of truth. Holy Spirit. There's a, there is a separation and an excommunication. There's a communication breakdown. When we decrease, when we humble ourselves under the word, we no longer have that connection with the world. We have come out from among them. And we are separated. To the Lord alone. That's why the scriptures say we are strangers, foreigners and pilgrims passing through in the land. Foreigners. We're like foreign people in our own land. Foreigners. Strangers. Pilgrims passing through. How powerful that the Spirit of God can do that in a person. But I'm Australian. But I was born of a, 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 a certain race and tradition and culture. But I have become like a stranger to them. Because now you're born of another family. And only those on the decrease and those who are humble enough will accept that. And go with it. And realise. Wherever we are. There's going to be. A communication breakdown. With the, those who are of the spirit of error. And how many have the spirit of truth? Only a remnant. That's why it's hard to communicate. There's a spirit of error interrupting. Usually with a but. But, but, but. No, no buts about it. Jesus said it. I believe it. That's it. I don't care what you say. I don't care what the multitude say. I don't care what the government says. I don't care what the world says. What did Jesus say? He said you cannot keep your life and have it too. Unless you pick up your cross, deny yourself daily of sin, follow him, deny yourself of all those sinful pleasures you can have, deny yourself of this world and walk with him. You cannot be his disciple, full stop, period, unless you love me more than your mother and sisters and brothers in the flesh. Sisters and brothers that come from your earthly lineage, unless you love me more than your mother, sister, brother, fathers, and whatever you, you're associated with, 
unless I'm above all of them and I get preeminence and priority, you are not my disciple. If you doubt what I say, go to Matthew chapter 10, read the whole chapter, read it sincerely, read it, and then come back and tell me I'm not right. And I'll laugh in your face. Because I am right. Because I have the spirit of truth. I do not have the spirit of error. There is no error in what I teach and preach. Scripturally. If there is, find it and show me. Show me. Find it and show me my error. And then I will repent and rectify my error. Because it would have been done unintentionally. If there is. Show me the error. And if you can't show me error, and you say that it is error, and we find out it's not error, well, you're going to have to eat humble pie. You will have to decrease, won't you? <laughs> and then you can make a decrease offering. <laughs> ah, not really. Make a love offering. Yeah. Excommunicated. This is exalted nine. Last week was exalted eight. Exalted nine. Excommunicated. Excommunicated from friends. Right? Excommunicated even from your job, maybe, if called for. That's a cruncher. I mean, that's stake on the plate, isn't it? The job thingy. Uh -uh, don't want to do that. Oh, so your job's worth more than Jesus. And you don't even believe Jesus, that he can get you another job with better pay, better conditions. You're just a slave to your job, are you? Are you bound up? Oh, no, I have to work. No, you don't. You just tell them you're not going to work. They say, well, we don't need you anymore. You say, well, I don't need you anymore. Bye. See ya. God bless. I'll be praying for you. And the Lord will look down and he'll see. Oh, he can't see that far. He can't see that. He didn't know you'd done that for him. Of course he does. He knows the heart. He knows you better than you know you. You know what I mean? He knows everything. He's omniscient. There's those sideburn benefits again, those beard benefits. Might be family, excommunicated, no longer communicating. Do you know, did you ever stop and think, you know what I mean, if there was a person going to the left, he said, oh, I'm turning left at the next corner. He said, oh, okay, I'm actually turning right. Are you coming with me? No. I'm turning left and that road is called straight. And I'm going to stay on that road. There'll be no more turning. All right. Well, I'm turning right. And do you know, if you go north, you will never ever find south. <laughs> Sounds a little bit excommunicating, doesn't it? Turning left on the road called straight. No turning back. You see how never the twain will meet. You see how things depart on the decrease and the... Uh, humbling of oneself before the Lord. John chapter 9, 22. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. See that? That's why people don't do these things because they're full of fear. Oh, not my job. Oh, no, not my, my friends. Oh, no, not my, my, oh, my, my. Not my, uh, not my religion. As one man said to me, 
I can't go on anymore. I can't cope. Paul, I'm not giving up my religion for anything. The letter he wrote me before that was, Oh, Paul, when I met you on the street, how powerful it was. It never had my eyes been opened. When I met you, oh, you are no doubt sent by God into my life. But a couple of weeks later, I've been reading your stuff and I found that I am not letting go of my stinking Roman Catholic religion to follow Jesus. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Bye. Next. Fear of the unknown. If I know anything about walking with Jesus, I would call it the unknown walk. Because you don't know. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty. But the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who cares for me. I don't know about tomorrow. I, I, I know him, but I know Elohim. And that's everything. To know him. Don't glory in your wisdom or strength or power or riches. Glory in that you know me, says the Lord, and that you understand me. Hallelujah. That I am he who goes throughout the earth and I relish in and delight myself in judgment, righteousness and loving kindness. Glory. Hallelujah. Hey? Excommunication. His parents said these things because of the fear. The Jews already had said and made it public, obviously, and made it public notice. If anyone confessed that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, they'd be outed. Verse 23, John 9, Therefore his parents said, He's of age, ask him. How cunning is that? See? He's of age, ask him. So they called on the man, asked him again. Hey? And then, verse 27, John 9, he answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciple? Do you see that? <clears throat> the moment, the moment that the Lord touched that man, he became a disciple. But yet you've got churches today, they've got disciples schools, they've got disciples this and disciples that. You know, the moment that you receive Jesus. We know this young man received Jesus, even though he just know that his name, all he knew was his name was Jesus. But he received him and he was prepared to follow him because he received him. He said, I'm going to be one of his followers. I'm going to be a disciple of him. Do you, well, you keep asking me the same question. Do you want to become one of his disciples too? And then the Pharisees blurted out the truth. The word of God exposed the Pharisees for who they really were. Hey? John 9, verse 28. Then they revealed reviled him and said, you are his disciple, we are Moses' disciple. People love to follow the dead, don't they? I love the dead. They love to follow the dead 
People love to drink blood, don't they? They love necromancy. They, they love to scull the blood and eat the gizzards and... You! Like vampires, that's with a B. Like the vampire. That's B A M B I R N. A vampire. They love to follow the dead, don't they? It's like the Roman Catholics, they love to follow that dead Mary. When you're dead, you're dead. We don't follow a dead Jesus. He's alive. The stone was rolling away. He's alive. He's no longer where he lay. He's alive. Let all the people say. Let all the people sing. Let all the people rejoice that Jesus is alive. We follow a living God. Yeah, you know, the old Buddhists, they follow some dead God, you know. Oh, he's dead now. <coughs> Muhammad's dead now. How can you follow him? He's dead. We follow the living Jesus, alive and living. Muslims follow a dead prophet. We follow a living prophet. We follow the great prophet, Acts 3.23. The one that Moses spoke about himself and said, if you don't listen to him, the great prophet, Jesus the Christ, you'll be utterly destroyed. In other words, you'll end up in hell. We follow the great prophet Jesus. Who is God? Who is the Son of God? Who, who is the Son of Man? Who is the man from Galilee? Who is Jesus? Emmanuel, God with us, Prince of Peace, Elohim, Yahweh Sabah, Lord of a warring people, Yah, Shikaras, Unda, Manbalasi, Imbre, oh, glory, ah, ah, glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory. Excommunicated from all the muck and the rot and the filth and the grime of time. Excommunicated, set free to take the left hand turn onto the narrow road, never leaving, knowing that if we go left, we'll never find the right. It'll be just straight all the way on the narrow road to glory. Because if we turn left, we know it's the right way. We go down the straight road. We don't go the other way. You can't go in two directions at the same time. You cannot walk in two directions at the same time. You cannot say, hey, yeah, I, I love Jesus and I, I follow Jesus and, and you're living in sin. You're not following Jesus and you don't love Jesus. You're self-deceived. Probably twice dead, pulled up by the roots. Clouds without rain. Someone say Amen. A message to ex communicator even from the community, eh? even from the community, from day one, the moment you decide to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, you will be persecuted. But you will be exalted within. You will be exalted by God and, and he will empower you. As 1 John 4, 4 to 6 said, that you have overcome little children. We are overcomers and more than overcomers through Christ. But the world is still wrestling. They're, they're still struggling. They're still in the flesh. They're, they're, they're wandering around and down with the spirit of error. They're confused. They're, they're like punch drunk punks. <laughs> boom, boom. The devil just keeps pounding them. Oh. Pounding them day after day. <laughs> and they're, uh, 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 they're just like, uh, uh, which way do we go now? Oh, try it over here. Have a, have a go at this. I'm soul searching. <laughs> finished. It's all finished in Christ when we decide to decrease, humble ourselves in the mighty hand of God that He may be. The one that exalts us, not ourselves. He will exalt you. You won't have to exalt yourself. He, he'll send letters in the mail. And they'll say, hey, there's 220 of us. The fear of God come on us. Hallelujah. 
Your word is powerful. The message you preach is undiluted. It's uncommon, undeniable, unfailing, unavoidably the true message of God. Man! Hallelujah. We find peace in this message. We find peace for our soul. We no longer fear we're going to hell like our eight friends who were slaughtered in cold blood. We have peace now because they have the Prince of Peace. They made a decision wholeheartedly follow Jesus. Glory to the Lamb. But you know what? Fireandhammer.com would never be there. It'd never be available. And all the messages on there and the teaching would never be available unless 28 and a half years ago I said, Lord, I want to decrease. I'm going to humble myself under your word. Come hell or high water, no matter what happens, no matter they set me on fire in the street, beat me, spit on me, take me to court, laugh at me, mock me, this, the, the, depart from me, slander me, when I get nothing in the offering, it doesn't matter. It's all about you, Jesus. You, you are Lord from here on in. And what's the result? Just in one hit, bang, 220 souls. Since last uh, Thursday... 4,000, that message has reached about the 220 Africans. It's reached 4,000 people in three days. 4,000. I tell you, that beats sausage sizzles. And it beats letterboxing too. <laughs> By the power of the spirit of truth. And people can jump up and down, say what they like. I know it's the truth. Because I know one thing about the truth, that error doesn't do. It don't set you free from known sin. Truth sets you free from known sin. On faith obedience. But the truth is only ever the truth. If you don't apply it to your life, you might as well not have the truth. Just keep going around that same old circle. Disappointed, dismayed, fearful, bound, by fringe benefits and what people think of you, expectations of men and women and religions. But when Jesus comes, when Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the devil he must flee. When Jesus comes, the people shout the victory. When Jesus comes, when he arrives, the devil he must flee. When Jesus comes, when Jesus comes, when you speak that word, of Jesus. Jesus says, I'm as near as my word is near. And my word is here. And everybody said, So I have a message today excommunication. Communication breakdown. Communication breakdown.